Hello everyone, Terra here and welcome back to my channel. I'm a bit excited today because I'll be doing my first ever Gundam review and what better way to start than with a perfect grade and more specifically perfect grade Shars Zaku. For those that do not know what uh, Gundam model kits are, check my introductory video, the link's gonna be down in the description. And without further ado, let's get on with the review. Starting off from the packaging, I do have it, but unfortunately it got repurposed into a storage box, so you're gonna have to look at a picture of it. And to be honest, there's not much to be said about the box, it's just a big rectangle with a Bordeaux colored font package. History time, because <laughs> you know I love my history, just a little bit of it. So, for your information, I'll only be discussing the history of this specific character or Gunpla. And if you want any details on Gundam model kits and in general history, check out my introduction video, which is going to be in the description. So this is the perfect grade 1 60th scale of uh, Gundam model kit of the MS-06S Zaku 2 mobile suit piloted by Shar Aznable, this guy. This was the modified, more powerful version of the standard Zaku mobile 2, sorry, Zaku 2 mobile suit. Which specifically made, which was specifically made for Shar, and it first appeared in the Mobile Suit Gundam anime, which aired back in 1979. In general, Shar Aznable was the pilot of this red mobile suit and the main antagonist of the series, and rival to the granddaddy of mechas RX-78-2 Gundam, which was piloted by Amor Ray. And enough about history, so let's get on with the figure itself. As I've stated previously in my introductory video, I'm just a basic builder, so don't expect any crazy modifications or customizations on my figures. Uh, as for color, you've got this basic red orangey color on most of the body. You have it on the shield, the arms, the heads, and the legs. Then you also have this dark uh, red or Bordeaux color which you have on the chest area and on the uh, waist and then you also have this dark blue on the elbows on the chest uh, the knees and the feet and you also have it on the machine gun before we go on with the review i must warn you the maniacal megatron is attacking the city in search of energon to power his evil schemes only by working together can we hope to stop him if enough supporters are gathered, then we will be able to call upon a mystery defender who will put an end to Megatron's plan. So smack the subscribe button, be the hero of this story. As for the faceplate, you've got the standard Zaku head with the mono eye. And you can also open up this to reveal some, you know, uh, head cannons and whatnot. Also, if you turn around at the back, you have a lever just here which allows for a movement in the mono eye. Let's see. Yeah, it moves just slightly. Also, you have a light up feature, which is made inside of the, let me just take it off. You actually have uh, batteries that go inside here and this entire circuit was made uh, piece by piece through the instructions and to be honest it's a pain in the beep <laughs> and as usual it doesn't work because it's trash now since this is a perfect grade obviously you have an inner frame which is a standard with all master and perfect grades and I think nowadays with uh, real grades as well so if you remove all the different armor pieces you're gonna see the inner frame and also you have a lot of moving panels which reveal uh, inner frame details and working pistons like this one on the knees, etc. Now going on to the articulation, the head can move 360 degrees but because of the armor piece it doesn't allow it to go around so that's disappointing and very minimal up and down movement. Now as for the shoulders, let's move this out of the way, you can move 90 degrees and then there's also like a piston inside the armpit which allows for a bit of a, an extra up and down movement 
that far. Then you have a full rotation on the bicep, a double hinged elbow which allows for just under 180 degrees and then you have a elbow rotation and then you have a full rotation on the wrist and the wrist can also move a bit inwards and outwards and I just popped off the thumb which is on a ball joint and as for the fingers you have the standard perforate so you have fully articulated fingers with one two three hinges and the same goes for the thumb which is on a ball joint and then another two hinges one here and one there then we move on to the waist which again is quite minimal you basically just have a swivel which is sad for a perfect grade and then if you move the skirts out of the way which these ones are so annoying you can have a full 90 degree kick to the front and then just under 90 degrees backwards kick and because of this thing getting in the way it doesn't allow it to go all the way back you have a full uh, thigh rotation but because of this armor again it gets in the way and then the knee can bend on a double hinge just under 180 degrees and you have some uh, working pistons in here which is quite cool and probably one of the worst parts of this figure is the feet. I mean you have just a bit of a swivel for the toe bend and pretty much nothing on the heel and then you have a bit of a side movement and a bit of a upward ankle movement and just slightly backwards. I mean the movement on the foot is just ridiculous. It's just non-existent basically which is a bit sad but I guess eh, I mean look at these stubby feet what would you expect as for accessories you have the standard uh, Zaku machine gun which is made out of this dark blue plastic and there's nothing much going on about this thing I mean the detailing on this as it comes out from the box is really minimal I mean you need someone who's really good at painting to make this thing look any decent unfortunately but anyways to attach this onto the arm to the hand so you have this foldable tab which only can be used in his right arm and actually that goes for both of the uh, accessories and you plug this tab into this little hole here and pray to god that it actually stays in place I mean seriously the tabbing on this figure is just horrible and then just set the arms around the fingers around the grip and there you have it now if you ask me this is quite an impractical design for a weapon and this thing is just you know hanging there Yep, trashy, trashy weapon. And for the second accessory that it comes with is the... Um, I don't remember the name for this. I think it's called the Hawk Axe or something. Yeah, this thing is tapped onto this little holster here. Which goes onto his left side skirt. And once again you have a small peg which is foldable and it goes onto each of the arms but for some reason whoever designed this they did put you know a, a second hole onto the left hand but I mean the way it's designed it can only be used on his right hand so I guess poor design and that's pretty much it for accessories. Um, 
It's a bit sad to be honest. I would like to see this figure come with the bazooka that's, I mean, used most of the time in the show, but I mean, what can you do about it? For size comparison, there he is next to Granddaddy Masterpiece Megatron. Really, really shiny figure. There he is with uh, Lego's Venom. Here he is with Iron Factory's Optimal Optimus Primal Optimus. I think this is Commander something from the actual company. Here he is next to this amazing figure. G Creation uh, Six Shot or Fuma. I really love this figure. And here he is next to this big bad boy. Previous uh, review. You can find the review for this guy down in the link below. And as you can see, is just a bit shorter than the Supreme class. Now moving on to the build quality and some of the negatives of the figure. Okay, this is quite an old figure, so for the most part it's solid, but there's quite a few bad things, at least from my perspective. First and foremost, starting from the top, uh, the electronics inside of the head, the way they're built is not a pre-made uh, part like newer uh, model kits you actually have to construct every single piece inside of the battery socket and that is just horrible you need to use uh, screws and wires and all other kinds of electronic things to set up this part and I must have tried it like five six seven times to put everything together according to the instructions of course and it just does not want to work properly now going on to these pipe looking parts these are probably the most annoying piece i've ever assembled on a gundam and every single one of these round pieces you need to cut it off from the runners you know clean it up and then put it onto these springs on the inside and this thing believe me is just difficult to do they don't actually you know sit on the figure all that well they're just basically hanging there so yeah yeah it's a bit of a letdown I mean they could have used something different for this maybe a plastic tube that goes along the way or I don't know make some design similar to the um, perfect rate style hands or so and another thing I found annoying is that this thing is stacked with polycaps. Wherever you have joints, it's going to be a polycap. And this means that a lot of joints like the feet, they're loose and flimsy and they don't allow for very good stability. So when posing this figure, yeah, it's not going to stay not, not in any way possible. Last but not least, water decals. You get absolutely nothing when it comes to water decals and personally I'm not very fond of them but they do look quite nice when you actually put them on and even basic stickers you get like next to nothing basically it's just a couple of minimal stickers you can put here and there. So as for positives, I can't say much. Yeah you get a big possible figure uh, that's fairly accurate to the show and I guess the simplistic design allows for a lot of panel lining or general customization and I have seen some really amazing works out there but overall I would not recommend this as a first perfect grade I will be a bit lenient because this is quite an old design but personally all the faults I found make me believe that uh, it would be much better off buying a master grade Zaku Two, for example. Um, considering that this is about a hundred dollars worth without the taxes, without the shipping, you could actually spend a range of 20 to 75 dollars on a master grade Zaku depending on what variant you get and you're probably gonna get something that's actually more posable and fun than this. So unfortunately I'm gonna have to give this like a two and a half out of five because 
of all the faults and you know in general design. But seriously, if you want to have a perfect grade Zaku, go for it. I hope you've all enjoyed this review and hopefully have given you some input on things to consider if you're going to get this figure. So if you like my content, smack that subscribe button to show your support. Take care everyone, see you next time, until then have a terrible great day.